Having a 3D printer is nice. It allows me to print things I don't already have. In this video, I'll explain how I built one. First of all, welcome back to another one of my videos, um, which I upload very consistently, once every six months. Uh, but with that being said, let's, let's talk about building a 3D printer. The first step to building a 3D printer is falsely convincing yourself you're qualified enough to do so. Next, you need to understand how a 3D printer works. I'm building an FDM, or Fuse Deposition Modeling 3D Printer. Basically, there's a device that pushes out molten plastic and a system that allows this device to move around in 3D space. Together, these two interconnected systems build a physical three-dimensional object layer by layer. Here's how we'll achieve this in the real world. An extruder will push a string of plastic known as filament into a hot end which melts the plastic. This hot end is connected to a system that allows it to move left and right, or along the x-axis. The entire x-axis is connected to a system that allows it to move up and down, or along the z-axis. Lastly, the surface that we print on, known as the print bed, is connected to a system that allows it to move forward and backward, or along the y-axis. Hence, we have a device that melts plastic and a system that allows it to move in 3D space. Of course, this is just a basic overview of how our printer will function. In actuality, getting something like this to work will require many, many intricate components, all of which I'm going to control using an Arduino Uno. Now, we'll talk more about all of this throughout this video. First, let's build the x-axis. I took two small wooden boards. Well, actually, each of these is two boards glued together for extra durability. But for the sake of simplicity, let's just pretend they're single thick boards. I attached a motor to one of the boards. Then, I attached a smooth rod along with linear bearings between the boards, as shown. The bearings at the ends just provide some extra support to the rod. Just like you can provide some extra support to this channel by subscribing. Next, I glued my hot end to another wooden board and glued the wooden board to the linear bearing in the middle. I connected a threaded rod to the motor using a flexible coupler. The threaded rod had three hex nuts screwed onto it, which I glued to the backboard of the hot end. I then added another smooth rod with linear bearings between the boards as shown. Of course, it is advisable that you use precise instruments for such work, and don't just eyeball everything like I did. But it works, and now, rotating the motor allows the hot end to move left and right. Moving over to the y-axis, I took two long wooden boards and attached a motor to one of them. I then took an acrylic sheet, which would be used as the print bed. Some people use heated beds, but according to reliable sources, I don't need one for the kind of plastic I'm using, which is PLA plastic. After very responsibly getting my fingerprints all over the acrylic sheet, I attached two linear bearings and three hex nuts to the sheet as shown, with wooden boards in the middle to raise the height of the print bed. I had my smooth and threaded rods inserted while I was gluing the bearings and nuts. The next step was to simply glue the smooth rods between the long wooden boards and use a coupler to connect the threaded rod to the motor. Again, rotating the motor allows the print bed to move forward and backward. Lastly, let's talk about the Z-axis. I attached two linear bearings and three nuts to one end of the x-axis and another three nuts to the other end. By the way, for all of this gluing work, I'm using a very strong two-part epoxy glue, which you definitely shouldn't get on your hands because it can take a very long time to come off. Don't ask me how I know. Now, using the x-axis as a width guide, I glued two smooth rods and two threaded rods connected to motors onto long wooden boards, as shown. As you can see, instead of one, 
I use two motors for the Z-axis as it has to work directly against gravity and has to move more mass than the other axes. Once again, rotating the motors allows the X-axis to move up and down. I then attach this entire system of three axes onto a white board. Now, we move over to building the extruder, which will push my plastic filament into the hot end. I used an MK8 extruder kit to build the main extruder. I then attached a coupler and a PTFE tube to it and inserted the other end of the tube into the hot end. I then glued the extruder close to one of the Z-axis motors. Lastly, I inserted my filament into the extruder. Now it's time for some circuit work. I glued a 12 volt power supply next to a Z-axis motor and connected a power plug to it. Your power plug may look different depending on where you live. I built the following circuits for the thermistor and heater, both of which are a part of the hot end. By the way, I used a soldering iron to make all of this a lot easier. The hot end also comes with a fan to keep it cool, which I connected directly to the power supply, so it turns on whenever the printer is plugged in. I then connected all the stepper motors to stepper drivers and enabled 1 8 micro-stepping for smoother and quieter motion. For the Z-axis, I connected the two motors in parallel to the same stepper driver. Also, when you're doing all of this electrical work, you want to be very careful and um, just speaking from experience, try not to short your power supply, um, unless you particularly like the smell of burning. Now, the only thing that's left to do is connect everything to the Arduino Uno, but not yet. First, I have to upload my firmware on the Arduino Uno. Opening up my computer, First, I installed the Arduino IDE and some other necessary drivers. I then installed the latest version of Python and downloaded the teacup firmware zip file. I unzipped the file, opened the entire folder in PyCharm, installed the 6 module and WX Python module, and opened configtool.py. Configtool has a pretty user-friendly interface where you can just input all the particular details related to your 3D printer, such as the steps per meter for each axis, the pinouts of the different components, and so on. Once I was done with tweaking all the details, I uploaded the firmware onto my Arduino Uno. If you plan on doing this yourself, it's a good idea to spend some time on the internet reading about how to configure and upload teacup firmware. I'll try to leave a link down in the description. Now that I had the firmware on my Arduino, I connected all the components to my Arduino Uno according to the pinout I specified in config tool. Now it's time to print. First, I made a 3D model of a cube. I imported this into Slice3R, which as the name implies, is a slicer. A slicer basically converts a 3D model into G-code, which is a set of instructions that tells the 3D printer what to do. In Slice3R, I adjusted all the settings to suit my printer. This includes adding some custom G-code in the printer settings to compensate for my printer's lack of end stops. I talk more about this at the end of the video. I then generated the G-code for my cube. Next, I opened a Pronterface, which is a program that allows me to control my printer. I plugged my printer's Arduino board into my computer. I connected my printer to Pronterface, and with the power on, I set my extruder temperature to 215 degrees Celsius for PLA filament. 
I then imported the G code I had generated earlier, and then I hit print. After a couple of failed attempts, I finally got a print in one piece. However, it looked pretty distorted due to layer shifting. I tried again with the cylinder. While slightly better, things still weren't looking too great. After a bit of research, I found out that the current limit on my x-axis stepper driver was set too low. So I fixed that and reprinted my cube and cylinder with substantially better results. I also printed this little mustache comb, which turned out great. I colored the mustache comb yellow with a permanent marker, but the texture of the print gave me slightly undesirable results. I then went ahead to 3D print my own name. Some may call this narcissism, and to be honest, that's what it is. Do keep in mind, you should use this 3D printer in an open and well-ventilated area. This printer basically melts plastic, so similar to me after consuming chickpeas, it can release some unpleasant fumes. Over time, I progressed to more complex prints, and after several failed attempts, I was able to successfully print a tiny Eiffel Tower. At this point, my family made me their personal showpiece manufacturer. All in all, despite the 7th grade science project aesthetic, the printer functions fine, although it does have its own set of issues. First off, there's a slight wobble in the X and Y axes, so if you look closely, the edges of my prints are not completely straight. Next up, the printer doesn't have any end stops, so it can't home itself. And every time I print something, I manually position my print head to the middle of the print bed. And then the custom G code I talked about earlier lets the printer know the print head is in the middle. Also, this printer is not very modular. Many components are glued down, and it's not very easy to replace parts. Although in the worst case scenario, where something stops working and you might need to replace it, the glue I used is not very heat resistant, so a blow dryer can be used to loosen the bond and allow you to pry off any components. Lastly, this is a very basic 3D printer, so it's okay for things like small show pieces or uh, small toys, but if you want to print something with moving parts or intricate details, or even if you want to print something in a different kind of plastic, say ABS plastic, you can't really do that with this machine. But again, for the most part, the prints do seem like proper prints, so I'm happy with it. And that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, I hope you liked it, and if you did, if you really did like this video, uh, you can definitely support me and my channel by emailing me your credit card information. That was a joke. For legal reasons, I must specify that that was a joke. Please do not email me anyone's personal financial information. Thank you for watching.